we'll be pitching to Eisenstone Capital Partners to raise the equity for the deal. The site is incredibly complex, so you'll have to come with innovative ideas and pitch it to the investment committee. In the latter part of the 19th century and the early 20th century, St. Louis was one of the largest and most powerful cities in the United States. So St. Louis, the colonial village, was founded in 1764. And before that, there were lots of people living in the area, lots of different indigenous groups, Europeans, but, and there were little small villages across the river. But it's in 1764 that the village of St. Louis is founded. And it grows up right where the arch is right now. But then it quickly, by the 1830s, 1840s, it starts to explode and it really starts to stretch. Um, and so it wouldn't be too long after the 1830s, and the 1840s, 1850s, that that area north of where the arch is right now starts to take hold and it becomes an industrial center. And it's a place where you know, there are large factories, there are grain elevators, there are trains coming and going, there are people living right up against the river. So in 1764, when they founded the fur trading village, the river was great because you could take your boats up and down, but you weren't really carrying stuff in large amounts. But it's in 1817 when someone you know, comes in in a steamboat that the city leaders realize oh, this is, this is something, this is gonna change. And so it's after 1817 that the city leaders decide to quarry away what was a 30 foot tall bluff and make a riverfront where boats can come and go and dock and things can be stored. This site has an interesting proximity to another big piece of St. Louis history and that's the Eads Bridge, which is sitting just a little bit south of this site. And the Eads Bridge is what opens up St. Louis to the rest of the country is when it comes to rail traffic, right? And it's able to connect us across the river. Prior to that bridge being there, most of that traffic, or all that traffic, would have come to St. Louis, things would have come off of rail cars, onto ferries, gone across the river, and that would have been really important to this site. That, that would have been happening right there. Once the Eads Bridge is built, it diverts a lot of that traffic away from this site and actually over um, west of downtown to where uh, Union Station is now. It's interesting to imagine, you know, 100 years from now, how will St. Louisans relate to the river? I definitely think we're in a period where we don't know how to relate to this, this river that was so important. Um, we've kind of turned our back to it. You know, when the arch came up, we kind of turned away from it and, and pointed west, and which is kind of an interesting connection to you know, westward expansion. And it's time to look back. My grandfather was actually the mayor of St. Louis from 19... 53 to 1965. Once I got into the area and started to look at it, it was incredibly attractive uh, from a real estate development perspective, given its proximity to downtown St. Louis and the Gateway Arch, as well as the riverfront. There are some site challenges associated with the, uh, the area. The area has virtually been abandoned for the past 50 years, so the infrastructure is virtually rotten. The arch is absolutely my favorite structure um, in the world. It's just so absolutely beautiful. The Eads Bridge, which is right next to this site, is the first steel construction in the world and it's absolutely gorgeous. So this new district, as you mentioned, includes uh, downtown, north of downtown, um, the site we're looking at here, um, and some neighborhoods that are really, really s stable and um, uh, historically, uh, you know, very, very successful, and still are, Lafayette Square, Soulard, Benton Park, et cetera. But our downtown, um, while it's absolutely gorgeous with, um, such incredible architecture and historical relevance um, is really challenged. The area just north of the riverfront, just on the other side of the Yates Bridge, is perhaps the most underutilized, underappreciated uh, uh, property in our entire region, and maybe our entire state. And, and to this day, transporting goods by way of barge is the most efficient and climate-friendly way of of transporting goods, and you get them here in St. Louis, right in the middle of the United States. One of 
three cities in the United States that has access to all Class 6 railway lines. Right here, right there. That is the spot that you have access to all of that infrastructure. A light rail system that connects two international airports. A light rail system that goes right through the Eats Bridge, right there. Helicopters, planes. There are three regional airports within 10 miles of that spot. It is an absolute gem. We're excited to see your presentations. Best of luck to everyone.